just talking? Well, what's the show about? It's about nothing. <laughs> no story? <laughs> no, forget the story. You gotta have a story. Who says you gotta have a story? Some men aren't looking for anything logical. Mike and Kev. I'm Mike. I, myself, and Kev. Let's get into some nerd stuff. Today we have another special guest. Me! Yes. Welcome, me. His We've name been is trying me. to get me on the show for 23 episodes now, and me finally showed up. Now I'm here. What is your true name? We've lo- we found Matt. me, but lost our grammar. I was going to say, <laughs> you have a very distinct voice, so people that know you might recognize me, but to the world that doesn't know your voice, my name is Matt. Matt Thoreau. Thoreau. Matt of House Thoreau. How you know us, Matt Thoreau? Just been buddies with you guys for a long time. We've been buddies, yeah. Before, you yep. know, we had uh, Mike and Kev, we had a Matt and Kev. <laughs> it's still going strong. It's still going. I mean, we haven't posted a video in like two <laughs> years, but, you know, we'll, we'll hit up the link in the description. Our fans are thirsty. They're, they're thirsty for more, and I think uh, we might could work in some nerd-related parodies yeah. and then have a frivolous fandom... Mashup. Mashup, Matt. Yeah. I like that idea. Anyways, Matty, what are you here to talk about today? As as our fans know, the guest brings the topic. Today I decided that I would like to discuss our favorite RPGs. Our favorite RPGs. Now, why would you want to discuss such a dicey topic? Man, I just feel like any gamer is passionate about their favorite RPG. That's true. I feel like when it comes to sports game. To me, nah. like Mario? What about Mario? Something like Mario? Like, a, like an RPG? No. no. I'm thinking more something with like a plot and uh, <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so, so, so like uh, the first Legend of Zelda game. Yeah, yeah everyone but Link, <laughs> who doesn't have dialogue. Do you think like fans' heads would explode if Link ever talked in one of the games? Doesn't he talk in one? No. I mean, have you ever... Does he? Have you watched the animated series? He uh, kills brain cells in dreams. <laughs> at the same time. It's just... He's so... He has so much energy to spend saving the world. Yeah, true. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> or he's gr- got to save his breath. Like, imagine that, that voice saying something. He's got to save his breath for when he's cutting through some thick bushes. Or he, Hi! <laughs> or, or he grunts when he's, like, upswinging. Like, ah! <laughs> the best is when you're just breaking pots and the grunt and somebody walks by the shirt. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what is Joe? If you there? if you just like hear the sounds from Zelda and, and didn't have not the context. in the context of the game, it's, oh God, it's, it's really ter- weird. It's terrible, yeah. right? Or if you just walked in on Zelda and didn't have the context, so he's just running around with a pig over his head, and you're like, what is going on? <laughs> Shut up, man! It's essential to the quest. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about favorite RPGs because it is quite a. Uh, I guess it's because they're a about a hundred hours long <laughs> that you spend yeah. with one game. And then you have the whole story, and you have these characters. There's just a lot to get attached to. So it's an instant RPG. flame war fodder. Yeah. Well, that's why we made it clear that we're not discussing the, the best, best RPG. Yeah. <laughs> it's our personal favorite because yeah. there's there's so much that can go into why it's your You're favorite. Right. I mean, we were discussing this. Um, you know, certain games you just play 
at certain times in your life, so you get like a certain nostalgia. Mm-hmm. You know, if yeah. you played a game like so one of the games we'll talk about, I played the summer after eighth grade when I had not a care in the world except playing this game night and day. Yeah, and maybe going to swimming. <laughs> so it's like when I pull, when I think about that game, it takes me back to a happy place. It brings back that peace that you had when you were a child, right? Which yeah. might explain why for us, like twenty three, twenty five, twenty six year olds, when 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 we hear the poor thirteen year old who's dumb enough on the forum to say. Uh, I played Fiddle Fantasy. It's kind of stupid. <laughs> we all pounce. And you're like, yeah. I mean, we're like, yeah, it is stupid, but that's modern day Final Fantasy, you ignorant little whelp. Um, like, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we established a f- couple criteria. Criterion? Criteria. Criterion. Is criteria plural? Criterion. Is it like fish? Is it already plural? Criterias. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it is criteria you're not, you're or criterion. Major, huh? We'll go with criterion because that sounds hardcore. Um, so we kind of came up with a couple criteria to judge everything by, and uh, or not really judge, but just to cover. So um, the components, the components that make that are essential to making a favorable RPG. Every not cake, a good. We're not going to use the word a good RPG. A favorable RPG. <laughs> every 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 cake needs the ingredients. And so for this delightful cake, we have story is the first thing we'll we'll discuss because that's the inherent difference between most games and RPGs. Yeah. Is that there's a overarching story that yeah. you're following. Uh, the characters that fill that story. Uh, the battle system, because, I mean... It's video games. It, it so would it just be, be watching a movie if you didn't have the battle <laughs> system. Uh, the soundtrack, because music, we all love music here. It's very essential to setting the mood, mm-hmm. sort of uh, establishing the, the feel of the game. And then we have side quests slash mini games. Because got, we all know that the main quest cannot take up most of your time. That's, <laughs> yeah, right. that's not a good thing. You gotta have something to do when that main quest is done, but you're not ready to be done. You yep. know what I'm saying? Um, and then we have the world and the explorability. Now that can mean a lot of things. Uh, I mean, some of the atmosphere could go into that, but we're gonna have another topic or another criterion for atmosphere. Um, so, Maddie boy, let's start it off with you, since you are the one who brought the topic. Uh, what is your favorite, or at least one of your favorite RPGs? Man, one of my favorite RPGs of all time has to be The Legend of Dragoon. Of Dragoon, huh? Of the Dragoon. Not My my favorite's kind of Legend of a Dragon, but this is not a dragon. No, separate from dragons. This is Dragoons. So the Dragoons were these selected people, um... They were selected, they got these special stones, and they could transform and call, call upon the power of the dragon. <laughs> and that was to, because, man, I forget, the story was really weird. But so they, something to do with, there's these winglies, and there, there was a war between winglies and the dragons. Okay. And the winglies were taking over the human race, and it was the universe to kind of balance things out. So the dragons were on the human side. The dragons yes. were good guys. The dragoons are humans. Just with dragon's those abilities. blood. Yeah. So no, they're, no they're, blood. <laughs> <laughs> dragon stones. Uh, so they're not, so the they're, stones. So they sprinkle dragon stone dust over their. There's no eyes. stone dust. Uh, they just had a stone. <laughs> so they're not just soldiers that are mounted with pistols. Correct. Okay. So it's a half human, half dragon. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it's just a human with dragon powers. So they're Power Rangers with the power of dragons. So instead of like, you know, when they called upon the Ninja Storm, when they became like, the Red Ranger was a, an ape, and like, the Green Ranger was like, uh, some crazy mythical beast. They were all just dragoons. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um, they just saw the whole plot. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Morphin Legend of Rangers. Uh, so... Then you go around, and it just so happens that everyone else that comes into your party <laughs> gets blessed with the spirit of yeah, the dragoon. As weird as that is, <laughs> <laughs> destiny. My Far friend. more uh, circumstantial things have happened in a game. Yeah. Let's be honest. Uh, so then you is everyone a dragoon in your party? Yeah. Uh, yes. Eventually. Yep. Okay. And then I I know that. Uh, so here, let's move on then to the characters. We established the main character's name is Dart. Isn't he kind of the like sol- solemn, like reluctant hero type? Yeah, or? he's the one. His he That's comes hero to, name to find his Dart. his town was destroyed. Um, so he goes on this vendetta, this mission to figure out who destroyed his town and avenge them. Okay. Um, he grew up with this girl named Shauna. Um, 
Um, he finds out that she was captured in the destroying of the town for whatever reason. Okay. He, it's kind of mysterious why they they basically destroy the town to get her. Okay. So he goes. That's how the mission or the story starts. Is he goes to rescue her. Right. Um, and she's kind of the. I forget. Is she in your party? I don't remember anyone named. She Shana. is for a while. Oh, um, okay. <clears throat> eventually, she gets replaced by someone named Miranda. But okay. I she's still like I in Miranda. in the game. Was as Miranda part the, of the purple story. one? No, purple she dragon, has. Or? She's the white dragoon. White dragoon. Okay. She so it, now does the color of the dragoon slash character correlate to their thing? Yeah. So like the white dragoon's like the white mage, so to speak. Well, it, it correlates <laughs> to the element of the dragon. Oh, okay. So but she's ice. No, she's the. Air. She's like light. She's light. Light so is not she an has element. like healing powers. Or stuff. <laughs> okay. How unrealistic is this game? Light isn't even an element. Okay. How am I supposed to take this game seriously? No, I'm Bro, you I'm just gotta take it. JRPGs. That's like that. Like we talked about with anime too. The beauty of of Japanese uh, storytelling is that nothing is too ridiculous, which means you get awesome stuff because they're not like, oh, that's just stupid. It's like no, they run with it, and then it becomes an awesome idea. Yeah. So you got um, the love interest, so to speak. I guess the love interest. Okay. And then let's go over some, who are some secondary characters that you either really enjoyed, like if they're humorous, or you just liked to use them, like they're cool. Yeah, man. Um, I really liked this old dude named Hassel, and I'm sorry if that's not how you pronounce it, but that's always how I pronounced it. Dude, uh, that's like, what, how do you pronounce the old lady in Harry Potter? McGonagall. McGonagall. Whenever, McGonagall. I read, whenever I read Harry Potter before the movies came out, I called her McNall because <laughs> I, I didn't know how to say it. And then when the movie came out, I was like, that's not her name. Oh, I thought it was her- Hermione. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know how to okay, say her Hermione. Off topic. Sorry. Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. Oh, uh, I thought you were saying no, more no, off topic. No, I'm taking this more how off topic. How dare you take it off topic? <laughs> For Pokemon, is it Zapdos or Zapdos? It's Zapdos. Zapdos. Hey, it's America, man. I call it whatever. Yeah, you can call it what you want. <laughs> Zapados. Our founding fathers died. So you could call Zapados by the wrong name if you wanted to. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. Our founding fathers uh, died of old age because they were not fighting the wars. So. Was it Brock or was it Broke? <laughs> <laughs> I believe the Japanese pronunciation is Broku. Brokuri. Was it Ash or Aish? Okay. <laughs> is Let's it battle is it, Ash? Is it Raj or, is it Raj or Raish? E is silent. My name is Ash. Uh, so, <laughs> Hassel. Hassel, yeah, he was kind of like the kung fu master, but he was also... Was he like the monk? Kind of, yeah. He's like I always the love characters that would run up and punch stuff. Yeah, the martial arts master, but he was also we the dirty peace. old man. You know? Right. <laughs> he's a dirty old man. Yeah. Like, he was like... <laughs> like, the, he didn't shower, or he just had like a... He was a really pervert. He was kind of like... He wasn't super perverted, but he was kind of like, pervert. Was he kind of like a, a master, like a teacher? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Is this Mike. like a trope? Last week's episode, we are talking about <laughs> tropes, trope. and you have like the, well, not necessarily perverted, but you have the old like recluse master. Yeah. And then we were talking about how with Master Roshi, they added in the twist that they're perverts. Because <laughs> you have like Yoshi and Yoda. And we were, we were saying it'd be funny if Yoda was a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look up your skirt, I did. <laughs> I believe is the joke. Um, and he's going to get away with it. He's, he's a cute little Muppet. Yeah. What do you, <laughs> Whatever. What do you do Yoda? <laughs> Such broad shoulders you have. <laughs> Okay. Um, so that's just funny. I never want to look at Yoda now. Yeah, I know, right? Never. He's too cool to like. He's like the super wise, like pure old dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he would never be creepy. No, he's such a troll. He's. I don't think he has those that emotion. I don't think he has sex drive. No, he's He's way too old. He's too. (laughs) I just mean that species. He's a century old. I I, I picture the Yoda species, whatever they're called, being asexual, meaning like they just split into two. What are they just? Cut their hand off and it becomes another Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Second Yoda. Um, so, any any other notable characters? Man, honestly, they're all pretty tropey. I feel like yeah. the, the only other one that I really liked was another spoiler spoiler alert. His name was Levitz or something like that. Okay. Latvitz. But he ends up dying, so I was kind of pissed. Oh, no, oh my gosh, dude, Aerith dies. No, um, so. Is he the purple one? I remember watching you play, and you had a purple guy. No, and was just he, tearing stuff. Up. That's um, Hassel. That's Hassel. Okay. And then, um, like his dragoon form was just beast. Yeah. And then, Levitz is uh, like Earth. He's the green dragon. Okay. And he gets replaced by King Albert. Green, he, Ranger, but he was green too. As green well. Ranger yeah. either dies or becomes uber powerful. And King Albert sucks. <laughs> <laughs> He's no Levitz. 
dude, this makes me kind of want to go back and play um, Chrono Cross. Did you ever play that game? I think it just reminds I, me because like their color. You and I never gave. It. You have my Chrono Cross? Oh, no, no, no. I borrowed it from Mason, and he, and he borrowed it from mine. you. <laughs> Do you still have that game? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Dude, I think we should play that. I think I have the strategy guide from way back in the day. Back when you had to, like, buy strategy I guides. I always <laughs> bought the strategy guide. Oh, it was so well, cool. Well, because you could buy the strategy guide, you could go onto IGN and download the script-based guide. Oh, that you couldn't find anything because we were too young to know about Control F, so you are like, yeah. I can't find anything. Yeah, Dude, back in the day, Hollywood Video, do you remember Hollywood Video? Oh, yeah. They made their own strategy guides. Really? So like I, a Hollywood I, yeah, Video? Yeah, I have a Legend of Dragoon. Yeah, like Hollywood it's in, Video. It's in shambles now because it, I used it so much, <laughs> but I had a Hollywood Video Legend of Dragoon strategy, strategy guide. Back when back when Hollywood Video had the money to produce things before <laughs> yeah, Netflix yeah. came and before yeah, back when like renting a thing was. And like this a thing. was like when when I was a kid, I would just buy strategy guides just to read them. Right. Like I don't know why. Oh yeah, no. Funny. Like when you're on the toilet, like a strategy guide is just great accompaniment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I had all this. Do you have my Kingdom Hearts one? No. Oh, I hope I know where that is because I had a Kingdom Hearts no. strategy guide that was I love to read. Um, so let's talk about Battle System, Matt. This game has quite an interesting one. In my opinion, this had one of the, my favorite battle systems in any turn-based RPG. Right. Because it had the turn-based element, um, but it also had an element of skill involved as well, where you had to time your attacks. In the, the If you timed out all of the attacks perfectly, it did more damage, and you got more SP, which gave you uh, Dragoon abilities. Okay. So, it was a combo system, basically, within yes. it. it. It almost was like playing Parappa the Rappa in yeah. a, a RPG. Like, that's why it's so cool. <laughs> and skipping to side quests, like, Legend of Dragoon didn't have a ton of side quests. I feel like leveling up the additions was almost like a side thing. You know what I mean? Because you had to do the certain combos, right? Because you, you chose which combo you used, right, mm-hmm. as your attack. And it leveled up the more you completed the addition successfully. Right. And once you got to, you completed the addition 99 times successfully, you were at the max level, and it did the most damage. Okay. That's really cool. I mean, as a fighting game player, it would, like, to me, I'm like, I could almost play a fighting game within a turn-based RPG. Yeah. It all, it can also be frustrating, developers. but... <laughs> right. Just, I'm just saying. I, I don't, has it been done since? There's Surely games that has. have done things similar, but yeah. nothing... Like an exact copy of the edition system. Right. Believe it or not, the the game that Cole mentioned last week, Wolf Among Us, it's kind of like that. It's a storytelling game, or like the Walking Dead games, where there is a little it's like bit a of, quick time event you gotta yeah. do or something. And so, there, like Wolf Among Us, for instance, has a lot more of the. It's much more actiony. Right. And so, uh, granted, it's, it's mouse based. So I wonder if you could implement that with a controller because uh, you're gonna do way more intricate. Is that game first stuff. person or is it third person? It's third person. Okay. And so it's 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 storybook, right? So it, this is kind of like I mean and we'll talk more about this later, but this is like a good adaption into more of an action RPG. It's definitely not an action RPG by no. any means, but it's like incorporating action elements into it mm-hmm. instead of just going straight on action RPG. Yeah. Um. So and we'll get more into that later. Was there anything else notable with the battle system? I mean, the dragoons were kind of like your summons, right? Yeah. I mean, you built up. SP when you complete additions, and then you could use your Dragoons, which kind of was, like, high damage right. stuff. So. But, like, I'm assuming you only had so much points or time or turns or something to use them. Yeah. Um, you ha- you Every time you increase a Dragoon level, it increases the amount of turns you can use it. Mm-hmm. So once you get to Dragoon level 5, if you get an accumulate enough SP to have, like, a uh, five bar, right. and then you can use the Dragoon for five turns. Okay. Oh, wow. Which was also dangerous, because while you're in Dragoon form, you can't use items. Oh, uh, so, so if you, you die have, here. Yeah. That's cool. So you have to use so those. Balance. And you could, I'm assuming, jack trajectory. out of Dragoon form. If you wanted to. Nope. No? Okay, I had to use it for the turns. Yep. That's kind of cool. So, wasn't there like a Super Dragoon I, I seem to remember? Um, like towards the end of the game, you become a Super Dragoon? Once, um... At the end of the game, Dart loses his red dragon spirit, and he gets the divine dragon spirit. Okay. Which is just, like, super crazy, legit, super saiyan. What if for once the main character wasn't the one that got the crazy epic thing? <laughs> <laughs> Although, I guess, you, well, we'll get into that. Which later. is funny. I want <clears throat> to talk about this. Um, the first time I played the game when I was a kid, I hated Dart. Which so you never used character. him? 
and I never healed him or anything. I let him die at the beginning <laughs> of every battle. But since he was the main character, you couldn't <laughs> switch him out. So I had two characters that, like, were beefy. You, you didn't get XP for Dart, so they got his XP. So at the end of the game, I had, like, two Jack characters. So I beat the game with only two characters. It was pretty fun. I love, I love the kid way of thinking. Oh, yeah. Because it's like... No... Because an adult, even if you don't like Dart, you're like, okay, well, I don't want to be short a character the yeah. whole game. But as a kid, you're like, nah, he sucks. I was like, I, I don't know why, I just hate him. I was like, screw Dart, he dies at the beginning he's of the battle. He's a pouty baby. He's, he's a white, oh, my village got destroyed. And Ooh. it's funny because he's actually one of the best characters, like, once right. you actually once you him up, play yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's get on to the next criterion. Um, a soundtrack. Do you remember any notable songs? Man... Legend of Dragoon has, like, a pretty average soundtrack, I feel like. Yeah. The reason that I enjoy it so much is just because, like, we talked about the nostalgic factor. Right. Like, when I hear the soundtrack, I, I feel like that's what brings game. back the memories. Well, and, you know, there's a difference between a, a good soundtrack and a bad soundtrack and, like, an iconic soundtrack. Mm-hmm. So a good soundtrack is usually going to be iconic. Mm-hmm. But, like, just because, and then there's, like, a difference, in my opinion. So, because certain movies, too, have, like, really good soundtracks, they're just not crazy memorable, or, like, you can't, like, hum it in your head, kind of mm-hmm. thing. Does Whereas, it like, does it help? Does it hurt? Or does it kind of just fly under the radar? And there's, there's, I mean, there's roles for each. Like, right. we don't think of the Shawshank Redemption soundtrack at the top of our heads. Right. But right. it worked really well. Right. Yeah. And then you have, like, Indiana Jones, which is, like, super, <laughs> super iconic. Yeah, that you could whistle right now. So. Or, <laughs> No like, exception. Too many bomb references in a row. <laughs> Last week during the mid halfway through the cast, you said, BOM! BOM! Is there a ship coming in? Oh, man, what is that? Are we going a level deeper? Uh, so, it, I mean, so you'd say it's at least a good soundtrack. It fits no, the it's mood. not bad by any means. I right. like it. Right. But... If I had never played the game and someone just started bumping that on a radio, I'd be like, what the heck is this? Right, you know what I mean? right, right. Mm. But it works for the game. It's not like, for instance, I heard the uh, Chocobo theme on a random radio station <laughs> driving through southern Illinois, and I was like, whoa, like it blew my mind. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> but again, Final Fantasy is one of the more icon- iconic yeah. soundtrack, at least for the su- certain of the games. So we covered a little bit of this side quest slash mini games. They're really only side quests. There's optional bosses that you can beat that really don't do much for you besides give you additional XP. Right. There's also um, these items that are scattered throughout the world that are hidden that you can collect called Stardust. Okay. Um, and you can give them to this lady, and she'll give you really good items. The depending Stardust on how many you Does have. she want to huff it, or what does she want to do with the Stardust? I don't know, man. I never questioned it. <laughs> I think she just collects it. She doesn't, like, sprinkle so she's either the, she's either the old cat lady or she's a drug addict. Yeah. She like sure Peter Pan. Does she want to fly away with the stardust? <laughs> <laughs> oh, tonight I'm oh, I got that stardust. Sorry, I gotta fly around the world tonight. I'm I'm busy. Um, but once you collect all of them and give them to her, she gives you this item, um, which lets you fight this optional boss. It's super difficult, named okay. Faust. And when you beat Ooh. him, you get a Phantom Shield, which negates. Uh, 100% of physical damage, I think. Oh my goodness. So it's super legit. OP. <laughs> but it's funny, because there, there's also an item similar to that that you can buy, but it's... Blocks magic. It costs like 10,000 gold, which it is a takes lot. forever to get. So, um, at the end of the game, if you get that, you can end up equipping every character with something like that, right. so you just have an undefeatable party. You have one <laughs> character that can't get hit by magic damage, and a character that can't get hit by physical damage. So you, and just, then, you can't leave. This is what cracks me up with all these old RPGs. You get all the best stuff from being the hardest bosses. So it's like, what are, what would you use yeah. that for? Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, there's no end game. So. <laughs> yeah, right. So there's is there any mini games really? Um, there's I mean, like besides a, like the the combo system. With there's the a battles. part in the game where you go to like a carnival with Shauna, and you're just walking around and playing. There's like mini games you can play, but they're all just. Pointless and okay. stupid. Yeah, no <laughs> real purpose to him. Yeah. Even as a kid, you're like, eh, no. <laughs> I just spin my tickets as quick as I can so I can advance. Get out of there. <laughs> right. It's like uh, Golden Saucer in Final Fantasy VII. Like, other, I mean, there's Chocobo Racing, which matters, but every other game in there really doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. But I just remember as a kid, like, my brother, if I asked to play his game, 
he would take it, he'd go to Golden Saucer. He's like, you can't leave Golden Saucer. <laughs> Have fun. Because that's, like, the only place, like, I couldn't really ruin anything. Yeah. But I actually, like, beat most of the Chocobo racing for him. Like, I didn't, like, at the time, I was like, how cool, how nice am I, bro, let me play his game. But really, he just didn't want to do the endless racing for the Chocobo, so he'd have me like, Kev, I'm going to treat you today. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then he'd also do the thing where he'd plug in Player 2 and give me a controller. And oh, he was yeah. playing like Final Fantasy or something, and so he'd be like, "Here, you're controlling this character." And you were and I'd be like, "Oh man, I'm yeah. doing so good! Oh, I killed him and all this." Uh, so gullible those kids. Man. I know yeah. kids are stupid. Well, I guess I have a question: is so is it this is this game really kind of like linear in where you get to go, what you get to do? Is it all kind of like? Yeah, it's pretty li- pretty linear. Does it um, open up though? At least, I mean, there's the story is completely linear, right? So, we should preface this with most RPGs. They are very, it's very important you play them in the right time frame. Yeah. Yes. Some of them are classics. Um, is there, so, I guess the eighth criterion we should talk about is, like... Replayability. Just, yeah, nostalgia and just the feeling it gives. Like, the feeling a game gives you is more important than the game itself, I guess, in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. sometimes I play games that I think uh, objectively are better than, like, GTA V, better than GTA IV. But GTA 4, I was the right age, and I could play that game after school, like, all day. Whereas, like, GTA 5, I could I played yeah. it for, like, 30 minutes and felt guilty because I had homework and things to do. Yep. And a job. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, a, a lot of these games, it just depends on the age you are when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, we'll cover this one quickly. Matt had a second favorite, and it's tied also, with for me, for favorite. <laughs> um, that is Final Fantasy X. This is another example of, I think Final Fantasy VII is a better game than Final Fantasy X, but for some reason I just have, like, a little bit more love for Final Fantasy X. Yeah. This was, it was tough for me to pick Legend of Dragoon over Final Fantasy X. Right. But just because of, like, we talked about the nostalgia that I had for Legend of Dragoon. Right. Um, I had to go with Legend of Dragoon. Mm-hmm. But Final Fantasy X is by far one of my favorite RPGs. So, the story, pretty well known at this point, you go on a pilgrimage with as Titus, the main character, with Yuna, who's a summoner, to go and stop Sin, who is ravaging, Spira is what the world ravaging. is called. Literally ravaging. Yeah. That is a not a strong word in this no. case. That might be a weak word. Is there a filthier word than ravaging, for just utterly destroyed? None that I'm going to openly say on that. <laughs> He's raping <laughs> Spira, like, let's be honest. And so... You, uh, you gotta go on this pilgrimage from temple to temple. You get, you're getting stronger as a summoner, and then there's like three or four plot twists that happen down the line. <laughs> what a twist! What a twist! Um, the main one is very well known at this point, the main twist. Um, and then at the end of the day, you, at the expense of the main character, save the day. So it's kind mm-hmm. of like a bittersweet ending, which I think was cool. Uh, so yeah, we already talked about Titus going through the characters, who is one of the most annoying main characters of all time, I think. Yeah. Matt, just yeah. think about when they're both laughing. <laughs> that was just an awkward part. In the game. Yeah, I don't know why they thought that was necessary. But I have a certain love for Titus. He's a lot of fun to play as. I enjoyed his role like within the party. Yeah, I just thought he, the way that, like I understand um, his look. They wanted him to look like he played a water-based sport and all this stuff. Right. But he looks just kind of... Couldn't why feminine? Did, but you know what, what I mean? if he just had uh, his second pant leg is the same? That would have changed. It would change everything. <laughs> just give him another pant leg, <laughs> yeah, right? Like I tell people this all the time. They're like, Titus looks so stupid, and I'm like, okay, I, I get that, but let me just make this change. Let me add a second pant leg. And you're like, you know what? Actually, yeah, the whole problem is actually just that pant, pant leg. leg. Oh. Here, we'll show Mike on this picture. I have. Oh no, no, yeah, I, I made that. You're jo- well aware. Yeah, 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 I made that joke, even, but I watched you guys Mike play it. Who a- hasn't played the game? Looked at it for one second and was like, "Why? Is he- where's this other pant leg?" <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the character though gets a lot better. Um, it makes sense. He's kind of the stuck-up, arrogant. Lovable. He's like the LeBron of Blitzball. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, he's the LeBron. In, in, in Xanarkand, where the story starts out. And so he's kind of... He's not really a dick to people, per se, but he's just really ignorant and... Yeah, and he. I think it also just ties into the fact that he's confused. Yeah, right. That he was brought back into this time that he can't connect with at all. Yeah, right. Because he lived in Xanarkand, which was... Futuristic, even different. though it was in the yeah. past. <laughs> yeah. It's a thousand years prior, but it's more futuristic. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and he, I, I mean, he gets, he sobers up as the story goes, and he gets a lot more serious, and I, I really enjoy, I think he has a good character development. I ended up liking him a lot. 
Yeah, exactly. By the end of the story, he's not such a little punk anymore. Um, then you have Yuna, who's, I don't know, kind of blah. Yeah. She's pretty much just goody two-shoes, never really... Her main confliction is that she is a people pleaser. Yeah. And she never, like, voices her distress because she doesn't want other people to be worried about her. <laughs> right. That's pretty much her one um, character flaw. You have Waka. Waka Ooh. is my dude! My dude, yeah. Uh, so, speaking of Waka, a.k.a. Voice of Jake. Voice of Jake the dog. Voice of Bender. What? And voice of Drake from Uncharted. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other guy. Two people uh, are the voices of everything. One of them is Nolan North. And Tara. Oh, Tara Strong, Tara Strong. is every woman. Yeah. Nolan North is... <laughs> hey. That's so funny. <laughs> they're similar. They're, they're, they sound nothing alike. Hey, but, they're, but they have a similar character trait, and that's that they're the voices of everything. Uh, I don't know what the guy's name is now, actually. But Jake the Dog. Um, and he's also Marcus Phoenix from... Years or mm, yeah, so right. he's been a lot of things. I'm not gonna lie, when I find found out he was the voice of Jake the dog, I got super happy. You're right. And it's cool because you can tell, like when you go back and listen to Waka after knowing that, you can tell. Yeah. But he puts such a different spin on it with the I- Islander or whatever you want to yeah. call it. Um, such a talented voice actor. You're right, right. You couldn't even tell because he had such a convincing accent. You have Kamari, who Kamari is outcast, the most useless character. Dude, of all time. you take that back. I hate Kamari. Me and our friend... Kamari me, want revenge! I like, know, he's, he's terrible, dumb, but me and our friend Big Kev, we've been arguing with everybody, because we're playing the HD remix right now, our Kamari is a beast, because we put in, like, two extra hours just to level him up. I've been trying to get everybody XP, like, every right. battle, like, switch and mount stuff, right. but I think the reason that he becomes obsolete towards the well, end of the game Well, everyone does everything better than him. He it's does every... Guy, he's, yeah. he's a jack-of-all-trades master of none, basically. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, clearly you're going to use Auron over him oh, and then the heartbeat. Yeah. So then you have Auron, who is the, out, or, uh, what would you call it, hermit, master. Yeah, 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 the, the, the old Samurai. Thieser. The old thieser. Yeah, the old but geezer. But not dirty. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, he's not perverted in any way. But he has, uh, for some reason, a, a distinct love of not using one of his arms, which makes no sense. <laughs> it's like he, They gimp- never specify that he got it injured or I anything. I think it's just gimpy. Yeah. Um, like the dude in Scary Movie 2? Like it's just yeah, if you walked games. around with your arm in a sling 24-7, though, it would be gimpy. It's, right? it's like he chose... He's like, I'm, just, I'm done with this arm. It was like <laughs> dart. It was like his dart. He's like, I'm just done with this. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's just so strong with that right arm, man. Um, and then, who else? Riku, who's like the thief. She's annoying. I don't think she's ever not annoying. <laughs> and then, who's left? Aaron we talked about. Oh, Lulu. 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 She's an alright character, definitely fan service in her character design. <laughs> yeah. But right now I'm playing playing through it again. She's a beast. Like her like she's your main black mage in the story and uh, her damage is like always good. Um I think that's it. I think that's it. That covers it. So those are your characters. Um really I think Titus, Aaron, and Waka are like the three characters that really make the story good. I yeah. really enjoyed each of those, because Oren kind of fills you in on the backstory mm-hmm. with Titus's father, Jekt, and a lot of the history. Like, you kind of find out a lot of the history of the Summoners and their whole I pilgrimage think, through Oren. Like, as, as annoying as Riku is, I think she's crucial to at least the character development because mm-hmm. of Waka's hate for the Albed. Right. That's true. That he grows to be her friend before he discovers that she's an Albed. Yeah. Right, right. Because, yeah, that's true. Waka is always... Because the thing is, Waka is really religious, and like so it kind of plays off, parodies that whole thing. Yeah. Speaking of that, um, I did like a lot of reading about this, and it's super obvious now that I go back and play it, but mm. Final Fantasy X is not necessarily anti-Christian, but super anti-religion in general. Right. Which is just kind of weird. Right. There's actually a game theory. It's balanced, too, though, because I remember, like, the uh, the people want to use Machina to destroy Sin, and then, like, Waka's like, don't do it for his religious reasons, he doesn't want to use the Machina. Mm-hmm. And then the people are like, no, we, we're smart enough, we can be, defeat him with these Machina, and then Sin just destroys him. Yeah. So, I mean, to be f- it is definitely anti-religious, I think, but it's at least a little but balanced. But the thing, like, with, uh, like, Waka um, thinking that it's because of technology um, that Sin is in the world. Right. Um, it kind of references that the reason that they're so, uh, like, not technologically advanced is just because of their religion. Like, they're ignorant in that regard, you know? Right, right. 
I mean, it's 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 fair. It's not like distasteful. I don't. No, because it's, it's not o- o- like overt. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, and it's not specifically anti one religion. Right. It's just anti religion in general. What's well, right. more, to me, it seems it's more anti fundamentalism. It's like yeah, it's like be well rounded and yeah. learn multiple points of view basically. Because yeah, Riku's from the Albed. They obviously use Machina, and mm-hmm. so he kind of like learns about their culture through her, but the, a culture that he never really gave a chance. And then it turns out, like, other than using Machina, like, they're not so bad. Um, and so, yeah, and it just felt really intuitive, I guess. A lot of people think think it's an easier battle system because you can swap wh- whoever you need in. But I don't really see that as a bad thing. I don't. And I like seeing your turns. It, it adds that element of strategy that you can right. plan your moves. Right, exactly. Which, yeah, and we'll talk about that even more later. Soundtrack, we'll move on. I, I mean, feel like the, the, that's got to be one of the most strong... Yeah, the, the, this is my favorite soundtrack. <laughs> I mean, it's like up there. Like Final Fantasy VII soundtrack, if anybody's going to be like, I prefer Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy X, I would never argue that because they're both so good. I think these are the two most iconic yeah. soundtracks. Uh, this is, other than Final Fantasy XIV, I think this is the last Final Fantasy that Nobuo y- Yui mm-hmm. Matsu did. I think so, too. And then, but weren't you telling me he did Final Fantasy XIV soundtrack? Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. I don't, I'm never going to play it because I don't like MMORPGs, but... Um, Nobuo oh, <laughs> Yui Matsu, who wrote like Final Fantasy, I don't know when he started actually. I don't know. At least seven. He did seven through ten. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and he's just an amazing musician, and really has a knack for iconic like stuff you can hum in your head and stuff that really like just kind of like, sweeping. Yeah, like yeah. really powerful melodies that like stick with you. Well, because when Kevin and I lived together, he would like put on Final Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really and I put on like, like piano yeah. remixes. Like, I like this. Like, <laughs> nice. This is one of the few you OSTs learn, like, that I can just turn, put on the OST, the whole thing, and right. just listen it's to listen and enjoy. Uh-huh. And the cool thing about the HD remix is that they remixed the soundtrack as well. So yeah. it's been a lot of fun for me to like go through and be like, okay, I remember the song, and it sounds like this, the original, but it's got a nice, a nice little twist. It's a twist. Um, so I definitely recommend it. I think what I'll do for this podcast is I'll I'll link some some of the soundtrack at the bottom. I'll link at least one, maybe even two songs for each of these games um, at the bottom, just so anybody who's kind of interested can check them out and see what we're talking about. Um, side quest mini games, greatest mini game of all time, Blitzball. <laughs> I've never gotten into it. Really? Yeah. I see. This is another thing. As a kid, <laughs> as a kid, my brother, I played his Blitzball. <laughs> like side quest is what I was allowed to do on my brother's games as a kid. Uh, so I've always enjoyed Blitzball. It, you know, going back and playing it now, it's really not that good. But it's yeah, nostalgia it's, dose. It's fun though for what it is, considering it's the game. It's not called Blitzball of Game. <laughs> it's it's a fun little diversion, even though you just throw the ball to Titus and Jack Shot. Like yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> the game. I think the reason I never got into it is because I would just always get super angry because right. I can never beat that initial battle against the Luka Goers. Yeah, because they were so yeah. good, dude. Big Kev beat them. You told me, and I was yeah. angry. We literally, we scored one goal, and then did our best to play keep away. Like, he's really good. Like, if you if you know how to play gimmick it, you can kind of swim, and then just pass, and then just keep doing that. So you're Spain. Yeah, and like, the time, yeah. the time, right. the time never <laughs> stops. Like, it's really stupid how the time goes. Like, for instance, if you're doing a move that takes a long time, the clock just never stops ticking. And when the goalie catches the ball, the camera just, like, pans on him swimming for a second, and like, that, that just keeps ticking down time. You know what I mean? So there's, like, stupid ways you can yeah. do it. Side quests, um, really, this game was pretty linear. Um, the game I was so it was good. criticized for how linear it was. I feel like it wasn't as big of a deal back then, because it was so good. It wasn't until, like, Final, like, whenever Final Fantasy XIII came out and was super linear, I remember reading on the internet, and everyone was like, remember FF10, how it was exactly the same? But, like, nobody cared back then. Because, yeah. like, the rest of the game, the story and the music, and, like, everything was so good compared to Final Fantasy XIII, so... Really, the only side quests, I like it, at about three quarters of the way through the game, you reach a place called the Calm Lands. Mm. And you get the airship, and then you can go back to, like, old places, and you have to... There's a bunch of different side quests. You have to capture all the monsters with RN to get mm-hmm. his... Because everybody's ultimate weapons, you get them, but they're not, like, unlocked. You have to get certain items to uh, get gotcha. into their full potential, which is cool and or lame, depending on the, the mini yeah. game. Um Chocobo racing, again, it was just a one-time thing with Titus, but it was, like, a nightmare. It was the worst. <laughs> yeah, that one was not good. Um, There's the additional Aeons you can unlock. Too. Yeah, that's true. You can get, um, uh, what was it, Anima? Anima. Yo Jimbo. Yo Jimbo. Yo Jimbo, you pay him money, and then he does an attack, and it's just random. It's 
like you could pay him one gil and do nine nine nine. What do you well, do? You know what Yojimbo means? Uh, it's um. You know the word Ronin for uh, for Japan, like the wandering samurai mercenary. Yeah. Ronin is a made up word. Okay. They're called Yojimbo. Oh really? That's so why. he's just a wandering. That explains yeah. why he used a katana. Yeah. He's a mercenary. So um, <laughs> he didn't have very much honor because I paid him all of my gil. I didn't save it, but I paid him all of my gil one time, which was like I mean millions, and he did like no damage. <laughs> I remember there was like an ultimate move that he had, but he had to give him like a certain amount of gold. There was a gimmick. Yeah. yeah. To it. it wasn't like the more you gave him the. The, the more, of a the harder he'd yeah. work for you. No. There was like a range that you had to give him. This on, this on. And then there was the Ma- Magus, Magus sisters. Yeah, which were probably the most powerful. Ones. Yeah, they're the most powerful, and they were the most important because there was this one monster you could catch with Orin, and then when you fought it in the Beast Arena in the Calm Lands, it would give you two power plus four spheres. But it had like 1.2 million health, and it would like kill your people right away. And so you had to summon the Ma- Magus sisters. Because the one, her overdrive, she shot needles out the, of her butt. Yeah, and she, <laughs> yeah, they would do so much damage. So that was the way out I Out of her butt? It. Out of her butt, yeah. yeah. She's a bee. The Ma- Mega Sisters are like insects. It, it's, I'll have to show you something. Eagles out of the butt from an insect. Needles. Needles. Okay. <laughs> I heard. Oh, cool, you got birds on the brain. <laughs> I heard eagles. <laughs> I was doing? extremely bothered. Yeah, she that. screams America and then shoots <laughs> eagles. Ah! Her butt, dude. Yeah. So, uh, okay. you get all these Good. power plus four spheres, and then there was this one part on the sphere grid where it had a bunch of blank spheres, and so you could teleport all your people to it and just go around with all of your people, and That's then they you, could, and then yeah. they could all hit for max damage. It was pretty fun. So it was a linear game, but like once you get to a certain point, it opens up, and I felt. I felt like there was plenty to do. Mm. You know what I mean? So not not like it's not a sandbox. Because I think I do think that's one problem when people when we look back, we look and go, Oh well it's not open world, so it wasn't very open. It's like A you couldn't do that back then. Right. B. Oh, yeah, the hardware. And, I, and the, so much of that game was already dedicated to, like, cutscenes and the graphics. And, yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, it's because of, like, Final Fantasy VII, for instance, you have a big overworld that you can run around from the very beginning. And there's a lot more to explore in that way. There's no overworld in this game. You just teleport to the different levels, and then you're there. So, but I don't I don't think there's a lack of content. Yeah. It's a, as opposed to Final Fantasy XIII, which no. the story progressed in the same linear fashion, but then you... You get to the end, and, and you can, like, do these hunts. There's like, side quests, but... But it all involved yeah. just fighting. Like, the whole thing with that game is there's nothing to do with fight. And I did enjoy the battle system a lot. Mm-hmm. But then you get to the end of the game, and the side quest is to just go fight more. So, it was kind of disappointing. It reminds me like World of Warcraft, cough, cough. <laughs> yeah, I like World of Warcraft. Don't you dare talk bad about that game. <laughs> um, the nostalgia factor for that game, I think. I think the that. thing is, like... Even if there's a ton of additional content, there has to be motivation to do it. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. Well, we thought, when me and my brother were doing it, we thought we could fight Penance in the Dark Aeons. We didn't realize that you couldn't. And then when we couldn't, like, do it, we finally decided, well, maybe we should look online. And we found out you can't do it on, on the American PS2s. Uh, so, world, the world and explorability criterion, I think the world is top-notch. I really love the look of Spira. It's got a weird, mm-hmm. um, over the it's over-the-top-ish but it's really bright and colorful and um, reminds you a lot of Fantasy Star Online's character design. I don't know yeah. if you ever played that game. Mm. Oh. Explorability, obviously not as high because it's, it progresses linearly, and then when you get the airship, you can go anywhere, but it just involves t- teleporting to the level. Atmosphere, I think, is top-notch. Um, the soundtrack is both parts somber like the main theme, the piano theme that everybody knows to Xanarkin mm-hmm. is really sad. But, it's somber and sweeping. Like right. you get caught up in it. You're right. It's really. Emo- it's like your emotions when you're playing that game. You should uh, link the orchestra version of that song. Orchestra. Okay. It's, it's beautiful. Definitely. And then I'll put Besaid because that's just the best song ever. Um, and but it, it's at the same time really upbeat. For instance, when you go to I forget where it takes place, but the Blitzball tournament, mm-hmm. I thought they did a really job of making like it seemed like it's a bustling place and the music's more upbeat. Because remember the happy. rock song they had. Oh man! Da-da. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. At the very beginning cutscene, no. Yeah, that's awesome. not what I'm talking about. I I thought that was the most hardcore song. I don't think. When I, was a I kid. don't think Nobu Nobuo Yoimatsu wrote that. Maybe he did. <laughs> I think he did. He probably did. So <gasps> that's all that really needs to be said about FF10. I think everyone knows that's a great game, but it's tied for both of our favorites. So I felt like we should go over honorable that. mention. So now, Mike, we're gonna move on. You gotta. We've been in that JRPG mm-hmm. territory, so we need you to get us into. Some other territory. So, um, my choice is one that anybody who has listened to the podcast will be familiar with. 
What game is that, Mike? Fallout. What is that game? Fallout Three. Is that for the PlayStation? <laughs> I think I think it's I think it's for all 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 platforms except for GameCube. I'm just kidding. Um, you have talked about the game before, but we said favorite RPGs, and you're not a liar, and that's your favorite. So. Yep. This is true. So, we'll blow through the first two categories pretty darn quickly. Um, so for story, it is what you make it. I mean, there is an overarching story. There's a good faction, a bad faction, and a neutral faction, um, which further on it in New Vegas, which I just consider to be 3.1. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <clears throat> but you choose, you know, and, and in terms of characters, like you have your dad, who is Liam Neeson, the incomparable, <laughs> undeniable <laughs> Liam Neeson. Is it really voiced by Liam Neeson? Oh, man. I never knew that. This oh, might yeah. be my theme. No, yeah, 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 right. yeah, right. <laughs> this game is incomparable right now. Oh, yeah, it is. It's Liam Neeson. Incredible. I did not know that. And your dad, actually, it's a really cool dynamic because you go off chasing your dad and yada, yada, yada. But you you encounter all in the battle. And, and, and you know, the, the problem is, is everything's kind of blended together. So I'm going to kind of hodgepodge these categories. But, like, take the battle system. It's really integral to what kind of character you are because most of your choices – determine what gear you can have, what faction you belong to, which determines what resources you have available. Right. And so, you know, a melee character is way different than a, than a gun character or a stealth character, which is what I usually play. Right. And so what it comes down to is it's a lot of a lot of running around by yourself. It's a lot of exploring. So mm -hmm. the, the, the exploration... It's just strong. <laughs> yeah, this game then is strong in a lot of different places. Yeah, and it really blends. It's a holistic. You get to... It's, it's a write-your-own-adventure story. Right. Um, with zombies. I mean, and so the, ba the battle system for it is obviously, well, it was first person. I mean, yeah. it's a shooter. I, I'll call it an action game, because it's not necessarily a shooter, because like it I is. said, you can be a melee character. And I don't want to sound way. ignorant, but this is by the people who made uh, Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Right? Okay. Same well, people. Well, uh, yeah. Except for New Vegas was made by Obsidian, which... <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> the, main, the main series, though, yeah, is made by Bethesda. Because yeah. so, I never played this, but I loved you would honestly would like you, you, you would like it. Here, do you want it? I'm, gonna, I'm finding it. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. I'll find right. it for you. I yeah. actually so, have Mike's copy. Yep. Because <laughs> Mike was like, I don't have a PlayStation, just take it. Sweet. Yep. But, um, so basically, like, and the soundtrack I love, like, the the, the, the music, it, it is mood music. Like, I, not many people spring up the soundtrack, mm -hmm. but you can play this song that deals with you sneaking through the grocery store at the beginning of the game. And you like you see enemies and you deal with them. That's great. Whatever. You go and unlock a chest, and you hear the intercom. The rest <laughs> of the raiders got back, and the music that plays right after that point is it's just perfect. It, it triggers fear. It triggers oh crap. Like I actually I was gonna say I, I never <laughs> beat that game by any means, but I do remember one of the big first encounters. Yeah, as you like running in the open and you see a grocery store, so you're like I'm gonna go get some supplies. And yeah, I do remember that, that, like, all of a sudden, the raiders come back to their base, and you're like, oh my gosh. Like, they go, hey, where are you? <laughs> hey, guys, something's wrong. <laughs> and you're like, no, nothing's wrong, nothing's, nothing's wrong. wrong. Ignore me, please. <laughs> I'm nobody, I just wanted my Fruity Loops. Yeah. And then, you know, there's caverns with monsters, and, and the music, like, it's just perfect how this the, the, the orchestral and the... The kind of synthetic sounds. Blend. Did they use? Because it was supposed to be like '50s soundtrack, right? Yeah. Because the apocalypse happens during the '50s, so like yeah. the last recorded mm -hmm. music was from the '50s. Well, it's kind of like so. It's, it's and and the, that, this kind of goes to the flavor and the atmosphere. It's retro futurist, which means it's what you know all the all the Flash Gordon stuff right. from the '50s predicted what this would be with the futures like. That future happened, <laughs> right? And so everything's Dean Martin still, and or Frank Sinatra, or you know. Uh, you know all the the the, um, the 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 swell threads and all the and the armor is like you it looks clunky like oh yeah <laughs> kind of pictured spacesuits looking yeah I feel like. mm -hmm. very steampunk very and the laser guns are just really over the top looking <laughs> with like big cathode rays on it and you're like what <laughs> you're right you're like this is not as sleek as I I know that technology would look in the future yeah and so it, the. The whole the whole experience is very holistic. Like the side quests, the whole game is side quests. Yeah, you can run the end quest to its completion relatively quickly in Fallout Three. You just have to like skip a few places. Problem is, it's going to be hard for you to survive right. because there's explosions everywhere. And if you don't have good armor, you can't deal with the enemies. It's really hard to deal with. But I honestly, I, it's not even about the end game for me playing Fallout. It's and this this kind of like lends itself to Skyrim a little bit or the Elder Scrolls. 
it's making your own character, having your own story, dealing with everything on your own terms, and kind of just enjoying this world. And so, because um, with this game, you go at your own pace, pretty yeah. much. I oh, mean, yeah. it's you, how if you're really loving it, you could do a hundred million side quests in a row and play for like fifty hours and get nowhere. Or if you're not enjoying them, you can go through banging out quest. Gotcha. And so, if you have a hundred speech and a hundred charisma, or a ten charisma, a hundred speech, you don't have to do anything. You just click yes, 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 and right. you win. Right. Game over. <laughs> so people be like, yes, <laughs> yes, take my house. Yes, take my car. You need my car. Yes, take all my supplies. <laughs> That's exactly. It's exactly what happens. So you're like, man, I'm just so <laughs> ridiculously good looking. Yeah. I can just convince people to help me. <laughs> and so, it, I mean, so I, obviously, like, that's why I'm not a big, I'm not a super big fan of New Vegas, even though I played it to death. But that's only because I'm waiting for Fallout Fallout Four. But right. I really love it in terms of the getting into the story. You know. The music, the battle system, it's so, it's, it's as real as you're gonna get. Engrossing. Yes. It's, it's, it's all, it's all fantastical, but it's as real as you're gonna get in that kind of like, okay, I'm the running gunner, or I'm the sneaky guy, or I'm, right. I'm the commander, and. See, yeah, you have a strong imagination, though, so that's, yes. I think, because the thing is that the whole thing with JRPGs, I feel like, with the more set stories, is that they're cool because they're stuff that you know you couldn't think of. Like, you're like, only a crazy Japanese guy could have <laughs> wrote this story. Yeah. <laughs> So I like it. There's a place for both types oh, yeah. of games. Well, and the, my, my, my honorable mention is KOTOR, <laughs> and to an extent KOTOR 2. They have, they're basically, it's the same structure as a JRPG except Star Wars. <laughs> and so you have the Star Wars music, which is very awesome. Off, iconic, obviously. You have a little bit more room where planets you go to, but it is a linear story. And you have a little, you have a dark side and a light side. Right. Very Star Wars-y. Um, the first one I loved, it was very basal compared to what KOTOR 2 then became. Mm-hmm. KOTOR 2's ending made me very sad, but other than that, yeah, highly recommendable. So that's just my quick, your quickie. Yeah. Then you know I'll hop into my my favorite. We'll make this one quick as well. Uh, this one's a JRPG from PlayStation One, the king of JRPGs, Breath of Fire Three. Um, it was a RPG series made by Capcom. Uh, they discontinued it at some point down the line. They have they have one for PS2 that I ha- I have it. But I just don't have my PS2 anymore, uh, so I can't play it. And, but I'm pretty sure it's an action RPG. Like they sw- they switched it up, and the series died because you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that more. Yeah, which was the game that we started? That was Breath of Fire Three. Okay. We literally, Matt, we got to where the game gets really good, and then we never we stopped again. Yeah. yeah. So this game, I'm not going to go into the story of the characters too too much. Uh, the big thing with the story is that you are the last of the dragons, or oh. and so. The there's a so whole you thing. Are dragons? You you are a dragon. Okay, this time you are. You're not a dragon. a dragon. Gotcha. You're not mending. With we're the not spirit. mighty morphin power. Ranger <laughs> yeah, we're not mighty. Well, actually, you do mighty morph, but <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> there's no secret item. You just are a dragon that can turn like your person can turn into a dragon, <laughs> and you're like the last of them because there is a holy war and against the dragons, and um, there's a whole big conspiracy that the gods hated machinery. And that's why when you go overseas to the abandoned desert, you find all this high tech gadgetry and and all these things. And then it turns, but that this game is actually kind of anti religious too, I think, because the main at the end you kill the god of the game. Or like Hmm. I don't know, I don't remember. That's very Nietzsche. It's hard. I was very. uh, (laughs) That's interesting because in one of the Final Fantasies, you do the same thing. Yeah, you kill God. The giant giant whale thing. No, that's sin. That's That's sin. That's sin. That's sin. It's one of the earlier. I don't remember which. I don't. I I, I'm kind of fuzzy on a lot of the details of this game because I think I was like ten when I beat this game. But I don't remember if she was the god or just one of the gods, but she was basically the god like of the religion that where they went around slaying all the dragons. Mm. Um, so dragons are technology equals? No, I just think she she doesn't like anything that can threaten her, like like of human humans or whatever, or like having more power. Oh, you know? uh, okay. Yeah. So you are this dragon. You you wake up. You are frozen in some kind of gem underground, basically. And when they are mining for resources, they unearth you. So you dragon tar everyone. You're dragon tar egg. Yeah, basically. (laughs) Except can't you get like turn into different forms? or Yeah. So you know, well, the characters. There's several. um, Right, Ryu, Ryu, whatever you want to call it. It's Capcom game. Apparently, they'd call every (laughs) other main characters Ryu. Ryu means dragon. Okay. Oh, does it? Then it makes a lot of sense. Yes. Like, like, 
Ryu from Street Fighter has a dragon punch, but he's not a dragon. So this actually makes a lot of sense. Yes. You have Ryu. <laughs> every Breath of Fire game has Ryu in it. He's always the main character. And then there's Nina, which is in every Breath of Fire game. I don't think she's always necessarily a princess. She, I think she might be in four. But in three, she's basically the princess of one of the people, of one of the kingdoms around. She is, uh, and she is a fairy or something. Hmm. I, forget, I forget now, but she has wings. And she's your black mage. You have um, Ray. Who is a tiger, a wear tiger? Oh boy! But he doesn't he he doesn't know he's a wear tiger until a certain point in the game when he, you find you're like investigating all these murders that are happening, and then yeah, it turns out that's Ray. Like years later, he turns into a wear tiger, and his form is really awesome because there's this one ability you can steal from one of the um, monsters early on that is basically a target it targets a certain enemy. Because when you go wear tiger form, he's uncontrollable. You don't control his moves, and he'll kill your own people on accident because he's ah. like berserk. Yeah. So you can get an ability that lets you target the enemy, though, and then he becomes a beast. Yeah. Oh, boy. Awesome. So you have Momo. She was, like, really smart bookworm, and she's kind of your buff debuffer, and she also has a big cannon that she shoots. Not another Avatar reference, but not the, not the lemur? <laughs> not a lemur. Not a flying no. lemur at all, yeah, actually. And she doesn't <laughs> transform into a lemur, sadly. Ah. <laughs> you have Pico. He's a mutant onion. He was terrible. I never used him. What? I, I've heard he can actually be pretty good. Yeah. You go to, like, this farm where this, like, dirty corporation's been running all these genetic experiments, and you find a mutated onion. Monsanto's gift to the world. Mut- <laughs> yeah. Mutant warrior onion. Weird. And he punched stuff. That's the only reason I, li- I liked him at first, because when you, you do him, he goes, ah, and he just punches. But He then... cuts himself and makes the enemy cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he made me cry, because he was terrible. Um, is there, is... He's good for sauteing. Oh, and then my favorite character... For a while, his name is Gar. He was like the BA recluse master. <laughs> yes. Nah, he's More he's not, he's kind of like that, but he's kind of not. He's, he's also a, the pirate's favorite character as well. Gar. Gar. <laughs> um. Yeah. He he <laughs> he was a dragon hunter basically. Oh no. Yeah, and it's cool because you fight him in a tournament, um, kind of early on in the game, and you can actually beat him. I never did. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I think you get a cool item or something. But at the time, I was like, he's just so good. But <laughs> it's funny because with all these games, I get. Um, a favorite party, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So for Final Fantasy VII, I always used Cloud, Tifa, because I, like I said, I love people that punch stuff. And <laughs> uh, Sid. Sid was my dude! Yo, Jigga. Yeah, Sid was awesome, because he had one of the best overdrive, or not, they weren't called overdrive, not new. Limit Breaks. Limit Breaks, yeah. Yeah, and then, so, and then in Final Fantasy X, obviously, I used, I actually used kind of a stereotypical party in that game. I always used Titus, Orin, and Yuna. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. you literally, you can't die, she heals you. Titus has a lot of buff magic where he hey, can hey. taste you, yeah. Yeah, and then orange just hits for a lot of damage. Um, and then in this game, I always used Ryu, Momo, and Rei. Because Momo was the one that I had, I don't know if, I don't think you had to learn it with her, but she's the one I had the targeting spell with. Mm. But she also had a lot of, um, she had like the haste of that mm. game and the, and, and the stuff that could buff your power. Yeah. And then, so the battle system, I mean, it was pretty basic. You, you went, you couldn't see the order. It wasn't time-based either, but it just went off agility. Um, and then you could you could examine enemies and learn their abilities. You could guard, you could run, or you could attack, and then or do your spells. And the coolest part of the whole battle system was that Ryu as a dragon. You would find these different dragon genes throughout the game, mm-hmm. and then you could whenever you would select dragon mode, it would bring up a little menu where you had you to choose which, which genes you wanted to splice together. Ooh. And they had a bunch of different forms of dragon with different abilities. So like. You could have the, the Bahamut dragon, or you could have, like, an ice Bahamut dragon, or, like, all these crazy things, like, these different dragon forms that you could come up with. And so that was a lot of fun to me. Um, side, as far as side quests and minigames go, and I'm, I'm going to want this with world and explorability to be more quick. Um, this game really excelled in this. It was a very explorable world. It was more like Final Fantasy VII, where you had a top-down view of the world a map, and you'd have to run around, and you could go, you'd walk up the town, hit X, and then it would load the level. Okay, so it's kind of like the like that old Mario world traversing thing. Yeah, except there was not not a dotted line you walked. On. <laughs> you know, but, you could actually but, like, yeah, okay. It yeah, was yeah. like that. Like your guy was probably um, relatively not accurate how big he was <laughs> relative to the world. To the train. But you had a tiny little guy on the world map, and you would walk around, and then you could go up to different things. Okay. And so there are all kinds of, for, as far as side quests go, I had my favorite of all time, fishing. <laughs> there you go. It was probably really boring. Did but you catch was, a magic heart? I did. I did, man. And it was worthless. I'm making a very bad. I threw a coin. I threw a coin in the water, a worthless coin, and the stupid magic carp wasted my time by making me catch it. No, you had to like figure out the kind of bait you needed, and I forget how it worked exactly, but you had to catch certain fish, and you could trade it to this guy, and he would give you really good items. 
So there was really good equipments that you could get from this fishing mini mini game. I actually got, remember dude. watching you fish and being really bored. Being yeah, like, can dude. we do something else? I would be like, you want to fish, man? You're like, I'm good. <laughs> hey, like, dude, dude, it's a blast. Dude, dude, I'm dude, battling listen, over here. Man, you got to try fishing. Man, you ever reeled in an eight-foot fish? I'll tell you how long the fish was that you caught and go, no, hey, dude, dude's got to eat. Yeah, right? I mean, you got you to gotta put the boots boots on, man, and fish sometime. Hmm. Um so it also had all these um, masters. So you'd have to mm. find. I mean, it's kind of tedious, but you'd find a master. You'd sign up to be under their tutelage, and then you'd gain so many levels, and they could give you abilities from learning it. Which I kind of like, just because you had to find the masters. Like usually, if you found some kind of random cat, like for instance, there's this one called Bunyan. You found his cabin, and you walk up to it. His name was Bunyan. Yeah, and you had to. Ah! There's like a little chopping wood mini game, and then uh, he offers to like. Master you or master over you to tutel to tutelage you give you yeah tutelage you, and then you could learn abilities and so, also just with the whole finding the the dragon genes was cool. They had the of course the hard side bosses that you could fight towards the end and the hard dungeon where all the best monsters were and stuff. So I just really felt like this game exceeds or excels where some of the ones we talked about earlier didn't. Um, it has really good side quest mini games. Very explorable. Great atmosphere. It's sprite based, so mm. I, I really love the art. It's very anime style. So picture old school Capcom, and I mean, you pretty much know what it is. And then um, yeah, that pretty much does it for that game. And it, what we were talking about earlier, I played this when I was I think eight or ten years old, and it was over the summer when back when you didn't have to work a job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was the best. And so best it was just a great time. Yeah, I would just spend all day playing this game and being none the wiser. Yep. Um, so yeah, that pretty much does it, guys. Matty boy, do you have any concluding thoughts? Parting words of wisdom. Um, well, before this ends, oh, we had one bone to pick, didn't we? What was the bone? Yeah, we've been talking about this. Is we're just gonna keep this relative to Final Fantasy. We want to make the case that Final Fantasy games need to cut the poo, and they need to go back to turn based. Like they once were. At or, least for or, one game. Yeah, at least not always. Not every Final Fantasy game for And not an R- HD or a remix. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They re release they're like they re release seven, eight, nine, and ten, but they don't count. <laughs> it's like all that time and money they spent making Doo Doo City, Final Fantasy Lightning Returns, you could have been making a good turn based. Yeah, Matt, I wanna hear it. Did you or did you not buy Final Fantasy thirteen too? Okay, I bought so 13 you are funding too, the problem. But I didn't buy Lightning Returns. Okay, fair enough. You <laughs> finally pull, pulled the needle out of your arm. And Lightning Returns, what was the point of like, having a completely timed game? Like, who wants to play a game? Oh, really? Like, I never played, I don't even know anything about yeah. Lightning Returns. I was so sick of Final Fantasy XIII being... Yeah, I would have gotten it if it wasn't time. Oh, uh, really? It's, you're on the clock the whole yeah. game. Well, you know what, though? This is an industry-wide problem. Um, KOTOR went this route. Elder Scrolls, luckily, although uh, Matt informs me that they are still making a normal Elder Scrolls game, which makes me happy. Oh, they're making it online. Right. Smart, Bethesda. Smart, smart, smart. But, I mean, I would have bought KOTOR 3. And, I, I mean, yeah, I downloaded um, uh, The Old Republic, but I don't have time to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, MMOs are... I, <sighs> apparently, they still make money. I would have thought MMOs are done by now. The thing with MMOs, for me, is how much of a commitment it is. Like, right. Being, yeah. like, being an adult and being... Like busy all the time, you that's a commitment you have to make. <laughs> yeah, you know right. Saying? Right. And and those games suck because then when your friends who played more than you, you want to play with them and they're like, sorry dude, we're like thirty levels above you and you, yeah. you're wasting your time. So it's just stupid. I, I think RPGs they're fun to play with people, like on like this is our save, for instance. We're gonna play through this together. But it's not fun. I, I don't really care to play them. No. Online at the same time, you know what I mean. Mobas really like mobas or multiplayer, massive multiplayer, um, not RPGs. Right. Handle the like teamwork thing very well. Yeah, that's different because it's a set. It's uh, you can play one match, play ten matches. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. With these RPGs, where the, the leveling is so important in terms of how you progress through the the world, you know, if you don't put in the same amount of time as your friends, you just get left behind, and and it's just now you're stressed out. I don't want to be stressed out. Yeah, playing a game, worried about letting like, my, letting my friends down, <laughs> or you know the grinding. I mean, because that was the one really bad thing about right, the where you know they're just trying to keep you in it to make money. You know their monthly fee or whatever it is. Well, they're like, okay, so you can pay for this experience boost, or you can just kill sheep for like seventeen hours and then hopefully be able to take the boss. You know, because nobody I knew played that game anymore. Right. And they're like, oh, make a party much easier. I'm like, I don't know people. Right. 
You know, and I feel like because I, as you know, I was in World of Warcraft for a long time. Right. Geek. And once you get into end game, it's all chasing the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Like, right. there's Does the rainbow the, keep moving. Yeah, the rainbow just keeps moving. As soon as you get there, it moves. Like, there's the, the, the end best level gear. Right. That, like, you think, oh, man, I'm going to be legit if I get this gear. <laughs> and then you spend countless hours raiding, doing all this work. And then now there's another tier of armor. Yeah. And then better. I look back at all the time I spent doing that, and I could have been doing like, anything doing else. Doing anything, anything else. more productive. <laughs> yeah, I, right. It, it was fun. But, I mean, it's a, it's a big waste of time and money. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I just feel like FF10, maybe too linear or whatever. I've heard 10 2 is pretty good. I, I have I could I could play it. I don't know if I, I will. I might play it after I beat 10 again. Yeah. 11, MMO. 12 is hard for me. Um, Final Fantasy 12, the ba- I think the battle system and a lot of the things it did were good. But to me, the story and the characters were... So dry. Dry. Very dry. Yeah, I could not get into that story. And now, ever since Final Fantasy 13, though, they just... I feel like they don't listen to what the people want. Like, there's all these issues with the game that even the critics are pointing out, and then they just keep going deeper with it. Like, we're going to keep making this until you accept it. When it really, I feel like it should be the other way around. Um, obviously, I don't want to be like, you could never adapt your game. But there's got to be a, some cool little nuance you could add to a turn-based game at this point. And I, I'm sure indie developers probably, like crazy, are making games like this. And so. was, was oh, 13 um, so loved that they had to keep continuing the IP? Like, why not? I don't think just... it was loved at all. So there was, there was actually a game that my, our friend Steven highlighted to me, and it's um, a turn-based stealth game. Really? Huh. It's called um, um, Invisible Inc., like mm-hmm. Invisible Incorporated. Mm-hmm. And it's on Steam. It's an indie game. I have not played it yet, so I actually don't know Can't if it's any good. fully speak to it. But it but, intrigues me. But yeah, the fact of the matter is right? there's there are twists that within the turn-based genre that you could find. And it just seems like for Square, who kind of made, or a big part of making the turn-based genre what it is, like it'd be nice to watch them return to glory and see what they could do, because I know they want to make things different and fun. Um, what was it called? Invisible Ink? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just think there's a lot of room there, and I think that people go nuts for it. And I think that it would pull in a lot of kids who weren't maybe old enough to really get into Final Fantasy back when they were first making them. Right. Yeah. Well, if they told me that they needed funding for a turn-based Final Fantasy, I would donate tomorrow. Shut up and take, <laughs> shut up and take my money. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so here's all my money, please. I'm going to make a Kickstarter for Legendary <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You can make the dream. You can revive the dream, Maddie. <laughs> so, and, you know, I just feel like as far as... The JRPG goes. There haven't been as many turn-based games lately. I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of niche titles I don't know about. So, I just would like to see a Return of Glory for Final Fantasy, um, and I think I think you would see their sales skyrocket. Too. Skyrocket, just man! Off the charts. But right, what so do we just, know? We don't know nothing. How many <laughs> how many copies of video games that we've made have we sold? Zero. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> so I will say this: If Fallout Four works and everybody buys it. Please, for the love of God, with us, do not do not try to make an MMO <laughs> out of Fallout. Fallout. Yeah, I mean, all these companies like <laughs> like Half Life Three. Like, why does that not exist yet? I'm sure that we could do a whole cast. on You know why? Threes. Valve doesn't. Valve doesn't make three. We don't do three. <laughs> so, hey, man, if Toy Story Three happened, then Half Life Three can happen. Yeah. Dude, Toy Story Four <coughs> is that happening? Yes. I mean, I mean, they're they have a hundred percent. No, shut up. <laughs> Five's already in dev, but they uh, they are running out of money. <laughs> Pixar is about no, to no, no. The wall. They will never run out of money <laughs> thanks to Cars. Yeah, right. Cars Land and all that. And the funny thing is, Cars is like the worst Pixar movie. Oh yeah, Rascal Flats. But it's, <laughs> little kids love it, man. They do. Oh yeah, like they my do. little nephew Jack loves Mater. Like he has them all tattoos. Lightning McQueen loves Mater, but he just doesn't know about Buzz Lightyear. Actually, he probably does. I think kids still know about Toy Story, but like I don't know. It's. We're about to sound really hipster about yeah, right. movies, though. We better. Well, I'm acting like <laughs> people don't know about Toy Story. There's this movie. You guys should really check it out. I don't know out. if you've heard about it yet. It's kind of like not well It's known pretty yet. niche. <laughs> Dude, it's got, it's got Tom Hanks voicing stuff. Uh, yeah. Right. It's got Tom Hanks and Tim Allen. I mean, what more could you want? <laughs> should we ask Matt the question? Matt, what's your favorite Tom Hanks movie? And don't say it quickly. Hmm. And Mike, don't say yours because you swayed Cole. 
I have to IMBD real quick just to get a, <laughs> just to get a little feel for because the only two that I can think of right now is Big and uh, oh man, Big so good. Um, what's the one? Box of chocolates. <laughs> uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Yeah, no, he's been in. Dude, I don't think you even mentioned Big. Castaway, another good one. Castaway was great. Toy Story. Did you know that Tom Hanks is the most, they're the high, most high paid actor? Really? Oh, well, he finally beat Tim uh, uh, um, Eddie Murphy. Yep. Yes. Eddie Murphy was a high speed. Nothing actor. against Eddie Murphy. I just think that Tom Hanks is better. So oh, Captain Phillips was pretty great. Captain Phillips was good. Supposedly, the real guy that they based that off that off was was not like he was not he was arrogant and got them all in trouble and then luckily survived. So the members of the crew were really pissed off that <laughs> he's getting famous because of the movie. Man, would it be bad if I said Toy Story? That's no. what I said. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm gonna go with Toy Story. Can I you, love can, Toy can Story. you guess what mine was? I can't argue with that. Yours was the Green Mile. No, I think more. That's deaf. actually a really good one. Yeah, it is a good one. Think more death. More Saving Spencer. Private Ryan. Yes. But, dude, The Terminal, by the way, that's a good movie. You know what? I we like didn't even mention that one. The only bad movie he ever did, The Lady Killers. The Lady Killers? I don't know if I've even seen That just has a terrible name. It looked charming, and I watched it and went, I want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Still, for how many movies he's made, he has a really good oh, yeah. man, yeah. Oh man, I haven't even seen the Da Vinci. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> this is not the Tom Hanks podcast. <laughs> but this reminds me that Nicolas Cage is like the least, like the most least paid actor because, like, he I guess he's so terrible with money that he'll take any role You're just right. to make a buck. Right. B's. Ah, yeah. A B C D E F G. Have you ever seen that clip? No. <laughs> Where he goes to the alphabet. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I might have to put that in. At the why are you looking this up? Did or, you know that before they cast? Keanu Reeves, they were going to cast uh, Nick Cage. Nick Cage as Neo in The Matrix. Oh, man. Only, Imagine that. Only Nicolas no, Cage no, can make I'm Keanu Reeves. I'm not going Reeves. to. I don't want to. I would have been peeved. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I don't. I think we're a little bit so, uh, permanently a, off topic. This is here. a script for Ghost Rider? This seems like a good blockbuster. So, Matt, <laughs> next time you're on, we'll talk about worst actors of all time. Yes! <laughs> and go over how much they get paid relative to whether they deserve it. <laughs> um, so, Matty Boy, thank you for coming on the show yes. this Ooh, afternoon. Just class. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, yeah, for Fun. sure. Hopefully, would you ever come back? I would love to come back. Make us look good for our fans. Yep, yep. Yep. Give yep, us yep. a sterling review to everyone you know. Well, so hey, everybody. Thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Ooh.